Hello Magic Community on YouTube, I'm T1 Glisterelf with a deck tech for one of our patrons on Patreon, Chris, and uh, Margaret as well, I believe, because... Okay, there's so a little bit of backstory for this one. One, better late than never, and I'm sorry that this has taken so long. There's a reason. And two, uh, Chris and Margaret have been on with me about discard effects for some time. The last time that Chris requested a card that I make a deck tech about, it was Raider's Wake. He suggested doing Liliana's Caress, but as much as I tried, I could not make Liliana's Caress work. Liliana's Caress is an enchantment that whenever your opponent discards a card, they lose two life. Well, the trick is that if they don't have any cards to discard, they don't lose two life. It doesn't trigger every time that there's a discard effect. It triggers when there actually is a card that's discarded. And we, we went about trying to find a way to make this work. We tried, I tried anyway, like a Howling Mine Turbo Fog deck that also made them discard and thus would trigger it that way, which doesn't, if it doesn't seem like it works, that's because it probably doesn't, unfortunately. That's going really far out of my way to make an effect work that, at that point, there are much easier ways to do it. Much easier ways to do it. Wait a minute, haven't I built a deck like this before? Not a deck that triggers off of the opponent discarding, but one that makes them discard. And discard, and discard, and discard, and in fact, at a certain point, doesn't let them play magic anymore, because it just keeps taking cards out of their hand. Yes, I have actually made a deck like that before. Now, this was Cloudstone Rats, as in Cloudstone Curio and a whole bunch of rats. And if you know anything about rats as a tribe in Magic the Gathering, you know, one, they care a lot about discarding, and two, they are really not that strong in the traditional sense. They're not merfolk, they're not vampires, they're not it, a tribe that has a lot of plus one, plus one, and X effects onto them. There, there's not a lot of that going on. Rats are supposed to, if, to the extent that they do work, care about numbers of them, sheer numbers, which is pretty flavorful for what they are in real life. Uh, but two in particular care a lot about the number of other rats. One of them, Pack Rat, is so good at this that it what it broke limited. It broke Return to Ravnica draft at the time. Which is crazy, but there you go. The, it, it wasn't just a joke. If you had a Pack Rat, you could go 39 Swamps and a Pack Rat and make a deck out of that. That, that was a thing. <laughs> in, any, in any case, move back in the present. Uh, so Saffron Olive did a version of this list. Uh, not at all based on mine, it seems. It looks like we came <laughs> two rats from two very different places. His had Eldrazi Displacer, which made it go from a one-color deck, black, to effectively a three-color deck, mostly black, with white and colorless for Eldrazi Displacer, and a few other things. Since we're already playing white for Displacer, we might as well be playing white for, say, Path to Exile. But you can see where this is going. Eldrazi Displacer takes a card and blinks it, takes one of your other creatures, not itself, and blinks it at instant speed. In this deck, we're going to be doing something very similar, and we'll get to that in just a moment. All right. Actually, let's just start right off the bat. Um, there's some important context you need to understand first. We have four Aether Vials in the deck. It is a tribe, and so a lot of tribes are running Aether Vials, but we actually care about it as a combo piece. And you'll see why in just a second. Next, we have Cloudstone Curio. Now, this allows you, whenever you play a non-artifact permanent, you can bounce another of the same type. So you play a creature, you can bounce another creature. So we're going to play a rat and bounce a rat, and play a rat and bounce a rat. Now, why is this important? <laughs> Well, we have rats that care about discarding. We have Ravenous Rats, which is just target player discards a card. And we have Chittering Rats, which is target player takes a card in their hand and puts it back on top of their library. So that is, that is a substantial uh, way to put them back. <sighs> there are times when that card feels like Time Walk. If you've ever played Popper against Mono Black Control, there's a reason they play this card. It, it's really good. <laughs> And it's a 2-2 two -two on that. Alright, so what we care about here is that we want to use these cards to keep our opponent not just from having cards in hand, but to never let them actually keep a card for the rest of the game. And the way that this works is that you have Cloudstone Curio, Aether Vial on 2 in the case of Ravenous Rats, 3 in the case of Chittering Rats. You play one of your rats and bounce. Let's, I'm going to make it 2 for Ravenous Rats to start. You bounce Ravenous Rat back to hand. On your opponent's draw step, when they draw their one card, before they move to their main phase, 
tap the ether vial, flash in the ravenous rats, and they'll discard it. And then you use that cloud zone courier trigger to bounce another rat. And then when it comes to your turn, play the rat, bounce the ravenous rats to hand, and you see where this is going. Now if you're thinking, well wait a minute, that doesn't actually completely lock them out of the game, because if they have an instant, they could at least play that. So let's say you drop a ravenous rat, well they just drew lightning bolts and they're going to kill your ravenous rat and hopefully stop the lock from there. Ah, but chittering rats is even better, because either vial on three do the same thing, but chittering rats puts the card back on top of their deck. So if that's not an instant or something with flash, they're just going to keep drawing the same card over and over and over again for the rest of the game, which means you have actually rat locked your opponent. <laughs> If, it's a, if it sounds silly beyond belief, that's because it is. But <laughs> if you don't mind making your opponent mad, then this is the deck for you. Now, we obviously have to have a little bit more than just that. We have to build the rest of the deck so that we don't just lose in the process of trying to set up this terrifying combo. Alright, so the rest of the rats are... We start off with our one drop. It's Typhoid Rats. This is just simply a 1-1 one -one with Death Touch. Which is already, in some cases, a one-for-one. One. Either it takes a creature of theirs, or it just eats a spot removal spell, like a Lightning Bolt or a Fatal Push. That's... not great outside of the context of rats, but at least you can see where that's coming from. But in the context of rats, when you take the land Swarm Yard... Now, Swarm Yard lets you regenerate a rat. Uh, some other creature types as well, but we care about rats. It lets you regenerate a rat. So you have a regenerating death touch one drop creature. As soon as turn two, you can clog the board up for your opponent by just simply keeping the swamp, uh, the swarm yard, untapped. Oh my goodness! Now, admittedly, in this version of the deck that I've built, that's the only death touch creature. But there are some other ways to make that work. If your creature is big enough and regenerates, then that's effectively like death touch most of the time. That's where cards like pack rat come in. Pack Rack gets huge with just the rest of the rats, and it can make itself huge. <laughs> Again, Pack Rat is broken. Pack Rat is overpowered. And maybe not so much in today's context, of course. It's having to compete with Bloodbraid Elf and Jace and such, but it's still a really good card. Do not underestimate it by any means. All right. So then, on top of that, before I get into... Well, I will say, so we, we have Chittering Rats. I'm running a Nizumi Short Fang. Now, this is a rat that taps itself to make the opponent discard a card. And if they have no cards in hand at the time, well, then you turn it into basically the rack, but on a 3-3 rat body. And that's fine. Unfortunately, this means that we can't lock our opponent with it, because when we get them down to zero cards, it transforms. We have to say, bounce it back to hand or kill it and bring it back in order to abuse this, in order to keep doing this. Which is, admittedly, a way to balance the card. That's as it should be. You shouldn't be able to have a creature that just yadagaratsus you for the rest of the game. It doesn't let you draw anything. Alright. Well, okay, that's what the rest of the deck is supposed to do. But you shouldn't have a one-card combo that does that. Next, we have our legendary creatures. I have Inkai's Servant of Oni, which is a ninjutsu rat that gets to reanimate something, which is pretty good, just as a one of, as a legendary, as a curve topper, that's fine. You're making them discard so much and slowing the game down by making them discard so much that you're often going to get something good out of Ink Eyes. And then we have Marinar, which is your, uh, rat lord, I guess? It gives all rats fear and it can make more rats. It makes lots of more rats. It gets out of hand really quickly if the opponent can't deal with it. It is one of those. It is, a uh, what's the four-drop goblin that makes more goblins based on how many goblins you have? It's that for rats, essentially. Krinko, mob boss, there we go. All right. Now, one weakness that the deck had in my previous iteration is that it didn't have enough creatures that were big enough on their own. It didn't ha it had pack rat, but it didn't have enough other creatures that are doing this. This is something that I underestimated the need for, partially because we feel like a control deck, we're making, taking our opponent's resources, but also I underestimated the synergy of Swarm Yard with giant creatures. And so I have switched the list so that we now have Swarm of Rats in, 
Now, Swarm of Rats is basically a, a worse pack rats. It, it is. It's a two drop. Its power is equal to the number of rats you have, but its toughness stays at one. So it, it is just a flat out worse pack rat. But Swarm Yard is such a good card that when this thing gets to be a 4151-6171 and it's regenerating and you can use this as a wall, uh, that's still great. And eventually you'll get Marinar and give it fear and that actually becomes offensive. Offensive. Whatever. Alright, so those are the creatures that we have in this list, this crazy, crazy list. Uh, on top of that, another thing that I have added to the list, which admittedly I don't believe existed the first time around, if I remember correctly, is Obelisk of Erd. Now this is a Convoke artifact. It's six mana, but it's actually not, <laughs> because you can Convoke, and it gives creatures you control of a certain type, we're going to name Rat, plus two, plus two, period. And so if you have three lands and three rats, congrats! Uh, you end up getting an Obelisk of Erd that makes all of your rats much larger. It's a double lord. Rats are so weak that effects like these really do matter. Making your smallest rat a 3-3 really does matter in this. Now, it's only a 2 of because it's still, even though it's not actually 6 mana when you convoke for it, it's still really expensive and we need it later in the game, so we don't want to have too many. We don't want to clog ourselves with too many of these. That's 9 artifacts, 23 creatures, now, even though we have Fatal Push, and feel free to disagree with me on this, I am actually running Dismember. And I could do a, a mix, Dismember and Fatal Push. A lot of the reason for this is because, well, number one, we have a surprising amount of colorless mana for our non-creatures. Yes, Cavern will tap for black for rats, but other than that, I'm a little bit worried about getting color screwed, and so Dismember helps us with that just a little bit. Beyond that, though, uh, it deals with Gurmog Angler, Reality Smasher, and Tassiger, creatures that Fatal Push cannot deal with. And I don't know that those are going to see nearly as much play as they used to, because, again, Bloodbraid and Jace, we're looking to see how the meta shakes up. Uh, but in the meantime, I'm willing to give Dismember a try. I also expect that the presence of cards like Bloodbraid and Jace, especially Jace, are going to force certain creature decks to become faster. This is especially true for something like Infect. It's sort of the epitome of this, where the way that you beat a fair deck with a big four drop is you beat them on turn three in an unfair manner. And so Dismember gives me an out against cards like Glistener Elf that I expect to be on the rise. Certainly not just Glistener Elf, but that's the key example, the prime example. Uh, and then, and then we have Planeswalkers. Now, if you're thinking, well, wait a minute, outside of creatures, well, outside of Dismember, you don't really have a lot of kill spells, and outside of your creatures, you don't have much hand attack, we do have two Lilianas of the Veil. Just very simply, there's a reason that this card is so good. I'm only running two because I'm also running two Liliana the Last Hope. Now, Veil is going to help me control my opponent's hand in addition to everything else. Edict is great against Bogles, which I expect to see on the rise a bit. And she's good. <laughs> she's real good. Uh, now, Liliana the Last Hope gives me a targeted way to deal with small creatures, and the fact that it can go and get another rat back for me, in the context of a deck like this, is actually uh, is surprisingly good. It goes and gets a pack rat so that I can start that engine again, even if it's just getting back a typhoid rat for a death touch creature every turn. That's not so bad. Not every turn, but you know what I'm saying. You gotta work your way back up to getting typhoid rats. But that's pretty good. If your opponent happens to deal with one of your creatures in a way that isn't called Path to Exile, go and get it back. Uh, and of course, unlike Lithlion of the Veil, Last Hope actually can win the game with that emblem. Zombies and rats working together. Now, for the mana base, which is certainly wide open, feel free to change this if you like. In fact, I'm a little worried about not having enough black sources in the list right now. There are 20 lands, the way that I have it set up. We start off with four Cavern of Souls, because I expect more blue decks. I'm expecting Mana Leaks and Logic Knots and those sorts of things, to sh Cryptic Command, to show up more and more. And so Cavern of Souls seems like it's really good right now. If you happen to have them, great. If not, they are expensive, so I understand. Replace those with some Swamps if you'd like. But the Swarm Yards really help to make this deck. Rats don't get the synergy of you know, your Lord of Atlantis, Master of the Pearl Trident, where you get bigger and get something. They have to rely on effects like Swarm Yard, which are really good, but in a more subtle way. You need a Swarm Yard. 
It, ta it doesn't come in tapped, it makes colorless if you need, or it regenerates one of your rats. Congrats. Has that joke gotten old yet? I'm sorry, I'm not meaning to do that. Next I'm running two Mutavolts. Only two. They do benefit from Obelisk of Erd, and they will get fear thanks to Marinar. But this isn't a deck, unlike, say, Merfolk, that needs them quite as much, and actually I might even cut them all together, because we, again, don't have the plus one plus one effects. We have Obelisk of Erd and Fear, and that's about it. So, and it won't even, when it enters the battlefield, trigger uh, for Cloudstone Curry out, because it's land at the time. So, uh, unless there's some ruling about that that I'm missing, maybe there's a, some way to make that work that I don't know. Uh, but that just isn't... It, it's not as effective in this list as it would be in others. Plus, as much of a controlling list as we are, having a land creature gives us... Essentially, it does give us some Supreme Verdict insurance, or Wrath of God, Damnation, etc. Uh, in a deck that's probably not going to come back once it gets Wrathed anyway, to, to be honest. Okay. Then we have nine snow-covered swamps and an Urborg Tomb of Yawgmoth. It's legendary, so don't want to have more than one, but it takes all of those colorless lands and lets them tap for black, which is great because we have double black in the deck, like Liliana the Veil and Liliana the Last Hope. Yes, we also have Chittering Rats, for instance, but Chittering Rats at least will benefit from Cavern of Souls, whereas our Lilies do not. So that's this deck for you. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have any suggestions for me, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And again, if you like the Saffron Olive's uh, three-color list, then three-color, two-and-a-half-color list, then give that one a try. Drazi Displacer is actually sick, and unlike Cloudstone Curio, it can actually attack and block. It's still a 3-3, three -three, which is pretty good, last I heard. It does force some color constraints on you, but it also opens up the possibility of Path to Exile, and then cards like Warping Whale and Spatial Contortion, etc. I also like Mono Black now, in part because we're seeing Blood Braid Ponza be a thing, which means going into Blood Moons, basics seem really good right now. So, But that's just my opinion. Your opinion might be different, your meta might be different, and where you are, it might be right to go to that sort of list. But this is a suggestion of mine. I can't really call it a budget list because it's running Liliana of the Veil, <laughs> but also you can replace that. More Last Hopes, uh, add Fatal Push, or anything else you'd like. That's it. Take care, Magic Community, and I will see you later. Bye-bye!